afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Coram and Ken Shreve here with a breakdown of the action in today's session, where we saw a little bit of relief after a two-day sell-off. Stocks potentially stabilizing here today, Ken. And as always, a number of interesting stocks to look at. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it look, it looked like we were going to get a really strong close for the major stock indexes, but a little bit of sell, selling uh, pops up during the last uh, 15 minutes of trade or so. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look at uh, three stocks uh, amid a lot of uh, damage in the financial sector. LPL Financial is uh, sort of the lone wolf right now in the investment banking group. Uh, we'll also take a look at uh, Raytheon. Uh, defense stocks have been performing well, uh, giving an early buy signal today and uh, been wanting to own coal stocks. Well, one uh, pulled back and found support today, Arch Resources. So we'll take a look at that too. Yes, a uh, great one to check in on there. Well, first, let's take a look at the major indexes. Here is the NASDAQ composite finishing the day up just shy of one tenth of a percent. So the laggard here today of the three major indexes, the S&P 500 leading the gains today up four tenths of a percent. The Dow up a quarter of a percent. Small caps, though, struggling a little bit down about three tenths of a percent. But all in all, Ken, the NASDAQ here stabilizing where we want to see it. Yeah, it uh, came down to that 50-day uh, moving average, actually uh, pierced it, and then uh, rallied back up. Uh, this uh, chart is a little bit delayed. I mentioned some selling that came into the market during the final 15 minutes of trading. So the NASDAQ uh, actually ended. There it is right there. Yeah. So uh, NASDAQ ended with a gain of less than one-tenth of one percent, uh, but mm -hmm. you know, still uh, good to see it uh, finding support at the 50-day moving average. Uh, market is still very, very tricky, though, where uh, uptrend is under uh, pressure after a couple of distribution days in a row for the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Uh, so the confirmed uptrend is under some pressure, difficult environment for making money in, in stocks, but um, you know we're still seeing some, some candidates out there. Yes, and let's also take a look at the S&P 500 here, finding support right around its 200-day line and the 21-day line, those uh, levels converging there. And then a look at the Dow, here's the DIA ETF, uh, some support at the 50-day line here as well. And let's take a look at 0TNX, the 10-year Treasury yield, uh, as we're seeing the yield curve here steepen. But uh, yeah, the 10-year note still continuing to climb. Yeah, the uh, people keep saying this bond market is oversold, and uh, you know it's only a matter of time before yields start to uh, to back off. But that uh, ten-year yield keeps uh, chugging higher as the Fed gets ready to raise uh, interest rates uh, aggressively. It was interesting, uh, Ali, not that long ago. In fact, earlier this week, I think the two-year note had actually inverted yeah. with the with the ten-year, and that fanned a lot of uh, recession fears. But uh, today, you know, this uh, the yield on the ten-year note was around. Uh, at last check, 2.65%, and the yield on the two-year note, 245 So there's a 20 basis point spread, no more inversion, and now uh, this steepening uh, yield curve, who knows? Maybe the market's not worried about a recession. So some volatility in the, in the bond market, but pretty amazing to see that uh, huge spread and steepening uh, yield curve once right. again. Yeah, so stocks uh, uh, getting a little buoyed uh, by that uh, news there. Okay, let's take a look at some stocks like LPL Financial, LPLA, standing out here in the financial sector with a cup with handle base forming up about 2.3% today. Volume was double, and it is now approaching a cup with handle buy point. Yeah, when, uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot of these financial stocks and pronounced uh, downtrends, a lot of your, you know, mega caps like Goldman Sachs and, you know, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, all of these stocks in really, really nasty uh, downtrends. Uh, there's Morgan Stanley. By the way, all three of these stocks will be reporting our earnings next mm -hmm. week. So JP Morgan trying to put in a bottom here. But uh, so amid a lot of downtrends in the financial sector, you've got this investment banker that is uh, trading near highs. Now, there was news today that uh, that fueled LPL's uh, move. It was JMP Securities uh, upgraded the stock to market outperform, gave it a pretty good price target of 242. Um, you know, but what we like about LPL here, first of all, you've got good good uh, earnings and uh, sales growth over the past uh, three quarters, and then big big annual earnings estimates that you just uh, highlighted here, up 35 percent uh, this year and uh, accelerating 48 percent growth. Those little green upward arrows there just uh, tells you that. S 
estimates uh, have been uh, rising on the stock. So LPL Financial looks good. It's kind of the lone wolf in the investment banking group right now. At one point, Charles Schwab was looking uh, pretty good in, in this group, um, but uh, SCHW has, um, yeah, so this is the, the investment banking group and Charles Schwab uh, under a lot of selling pressure. Uh, Raymond James, RJF is, uh, you know, kind of hanging in there, but, uh, you know, trying to find uh, trying to find support at some converged uh, moving averages here. But LPL looks to be the uh, the Cadillac in the group at this point. Mm -hmm. And Raytheon RTX moving on over into the defense sector uh, hadn't been seeing as much of a, a boost in recent weeks, I think, as some of its other defense peers, because we looked at a number of them earlier this week on IBD Live. And Raytheon has just uh, been slowly pulling back here in light volume. And today, a nice upside reversal with a gain of about 2.6%. So arguably, actionable on the move today. Yeah, I think so. I mean, sometimes stocks can give uh, early early buy signals when they're consolidating and forming a, a base. And, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of volume in uh, RTX uh, today, but uh, that's been a pretty common theme recently. You know, we keep right. waiting for volume to roll into to stocks to give us a sense that uh, big investors are in there buying. But uh, so not much uh, volume in Raytheon today. It looks like it'll be a little higher than what we saw on Wednesday. But this is an early buy signal. It's a great uh, consolidation or flat base, I should say, forming above the 50 day uh, moving average. And there's, uh, like we've been talking about on IBD Live, there's broad-based uh, strength in this uh, defense uh, group, several stocks uh, acting well, and uh, Raytheon mm -hmm. is uh, right up there near the top. Yes, it is. All right. Well, now let's take a look at Arch Resources, a coal name we've been keeping tabs on. Uh, nice move today for the stock up over 6%. It's been pulling back to its 50-day line, and we like buying stocks. Well, I'm going to flip on over here to the weekly uh, on a move off of the 10-week line, and uh, Arch has seen a pretty big move before this pullback, so uh, compelling, uh, a compelling day here today for Arch. Yeah, uh, listen, the, the coal stocks, the fertilizer stocks, metals, miners, I mean, they've all been outperforming, but there are just so many extended stocks and people want right. to chase, uh, you know, chase performance, uh, the FOMO trade, fear of missing out. Uh, but that's an easy way to lose money. And, you know, Arch Resources, at least, you know, right now, it's not, not doesn't feel like you're chasing a stock here because of a, a nice, uh, a nice pullback to the 10 week moving average. And it is uh, finding support. So we'll see how, how it ends up, uh, how it ends the week. Uh, tomorrow. We'll see if weekly volume can come in uh, higher than what we saw last week. Uh, but this is what a good test of the 10-week uh, moving average looks like. It'll look a lot better if we can uh, see volume this week uh, come in quite a bit higher than what we saw uh, mm -hmm. the prior week. Well, it's definitely one to watch. And Ken, you and I are going to see everyone over on our leaderboard scorecard webinar here in about 15 minutes for subscribers and trialists. We're going to be talking about March performance and lots of great stuff. So I uh, can't wait to can't wait to do that with you over uh here in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> coming up, uh, coming up quickly. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see, One fifteen, uh, about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. we'll uh, start the leaderboard scorecard webinar. This is going to be for uh, March, where we, we did beat the S&P 500 in a challenging month, and we've got a uh, pretty good uh, portfolio of uh, stocks uh, spread across the, the right industries, we think. So we'll uh, talk more about that at uh, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. Yes, we will see you there. And you can join us by clicking the link at the top of the leaderboard landing page here shortly. So we'll see everyone there and we'll see you tomorrow morning on IBD Live. We've got a special guest coming up and Dave makes his return to the host chair. So that's going to be fun too. Investors.com slash IBD Live tomorrow morning with Alex Marenko, a special guest. He actually met Bill O'Neill at at the gym. So uh, it'll be good to good to pick his brain and uh, lots of good stuff there coming up. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow after the close as well.